That would be a gift, wouldn't it? And does Ian have, and, and so that's a gift. That would be something, a favor. I would give him that favor. So that's some of knowing that helps us understand some of what these words mean in our verse, and our story helps us know that. Do you remember our story is about a lady? Yeah. And what's her name? Grace. Grace? Grace. No, it's not Grace. It's not Grace. Some girls are named Grace, but that's not the name of the lady in our story. Silas. The name, her name is Ruth. That's right. And do you remember what country she was from? Is she an Israelite lady? Yeah. She's not. She's not an Israelite lady. She's not. Don't talk like that. That's gross. She's not one of the children of Israel. She's not one of God's special people. She was from a different country. Does anybody remember? Cody, you think you remember? Moab. Moab. That's right. She was from Moab. And do you remember what God they worshipped? Or what how they worshipped their idol god in Moab. Do you think you know? Oh, I saw your hand going up there. I didn't know if you do. Okay. Ian, I know you know the answer because your brother and sister are raising their hand. The name or how they... They, they sacrificed children to that god. That's right. It's ugly, awful god called Chemosh, or called Molech. And Molech They worship Molech by sacrificing children. So, but Ruth found out about God. Did she deserve to find out about God? No. No. Does anybody deserve to find out about God? No. We don't deserve to. But Ruth did. Do you remember how she found out about God? How did she find out about the one true God? Cody? A family from Israel moved into Moab. And do you remember why they moved? Why did they move away they from Israel? Because there was um, not enough food. There was not enough food. That's right. And they left the place that God prepared for them. And that was probably a bad thing to leave where God wanted you to be. But it ended up being, uh, God worked it out. It was a good thing for Ruth, wasn't it? Because that family moved to Moab and their sons met up with a couple girls there and they started liking those girls and pretty soon they talked to them and they found out about the real true God and then the boys got married and everything was great, wasn't it? Yeah, till them died. That's right. Till them died. Who died? Who died? In this picture there's six people. Who died? The, the boys. The boys died. And the dad died. That's bad. You know, in a game or something like that, people die and then you just restart. <laughs> but in life, you're dead forever. That's right. And it's very sad. They can't come back. The only way you'll ever see somebody again if they die is if they are saved. And they go to heaven and you are saved. And you get to go to heaven too. Otherwise, it's forever. And everybody's going to die someday. But anyway, so they died. And that left, so there was Ruth, and Ruth's sister, or friend, Orpah, do you remember the name of the mom? Who was, what was the name of the mom? Anybody remember that? Her name was Naomi. And Ruth and Naomi, Naomi decided to go back home to Israel to Bethlehem, actually, it's where she was from, and so she went back, and one of the girls went with her, and her name was Ruth. So Ruth went back to Israel, and that's where we left them, remember? They were on their way back. Orpah started, but she decided she was going to go back home with her parents, and Ruth decided, she decided that she no longer was going to serve or believe in the idols, she believed in God, right? 
she turned from her idols, and she said, I'm believing in God, and when the time came to choose between staying home with everybody she knew and every, everything that would be easy and going to Israel where there was nobody she knew, she decided, because she had believed, she acted like it. She decided she was going to go to Israel. Naomi's God was her God. Naomi's people were her people. Where Naomi lived, she was going to live. And she, she made that choice because she had believed on God in her heart. And she was a very brave woman for doing that. Now I want you to imagine that we are... So I'm thinking they're up in Moab and they went down to the river, they crossed the river, and we meet them somewhere along here. Or maybe let's imagine that you are them. In your mind, imagine that you are Ruth and you are Naomi. It's been 10 years since, for Naomi, it's been 10 years since you left Bethlehem. What do you think that Naomi is thinking? If you were Naomi, what would you be thinking as you start heading back to Bethlehem. You think, what, what would you be remembering? Stephen? Uh, Believe in God. Be thankful that God is leading you back to home. Because it's not easy just to get up and move. What might be something else that Naomi was thinking? Aaron? Or is this, what That's what you like when we go now and I think you might be thinking about Ruth. Um, Kaylee, what do you think? What, 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 what's that? She'd be thinking about her family, like the ones that aren't with her anymore, right? She left with a husband and two boys, and they were a happy family. They were running away from no food. But things were okay, especially it's going to be okay when they got to the other land where there was more food. And now she's coming back 10 years later, and she's got no family. Well, she doesn't have any family that she left with. Her husband has died, and her sons have died, but she does have one family, doesn't she? She has Ruth. And she and Ruth is very loyal and very dedicated and very loving. Now, let's imagine that you're Ruth. You grew up over here. You've never been over here. You're Ruth. What do you think Ruth is thinking about when she's here? Her mom and dad. She might be. She left her mom and dad. And her friend. And her what? And her friend. Her friend. Her friend said she's leaving everything that she knows, right? What else might she be thinking about? Imagine. What? Uh, her brother? Well, she might have had a brother, so she's probably thinking about her family that she's leaving behind. You think she's thinking about the gods that she left behind? Yeah. She says, don't ever want to worship those gods again. Don't ever want to be around that. So she's thinking about that. How do you think, you think she might be wondering how she's going to get any food here? I think so. She's a foreigner, isn't she? And now we should welcome foreigners, but most people don't welcome foreigners. They think they're different, right? We don't let, we, we're, okay. And Ruth, she's a foreigner. She might have been thinking, how am I even going to eat? How are we going to get anything? Naomi left, there's no man to take care of us, my husband. He would take care of me, but he died. died. It's just me and Ruth. What are we going to do? I don't think she worried, but she might have wondered. So, the Bible says that when they came to their town, where Naomi was from, Bethlehem, lots and lots of people came out, and they were looking at the two ladies who were coming toward their town. And some of them were talking Seems like I recognize that older one. We looked at her some more, and they probably they thought, "Is that Naomi? She looks different. She looks so much older. I think 
it's Naomi. And as they got closer, they saw that it was. And they, is that you, Naomi? She said, yes, it's me. Where is your husband? He died. What about your boys? Did they stay in Moab? All three of them are in graves in Moab. Life has been very bitter for me. Don't think of me as a pleasant woman. I'm very hurt. Life has been bad. But I have Ruth. And she told them about Ruth and how Ruth had left her home and how Ruth was her daughter-in-law and how her daughter-in-law had taken care of her. And so they went into town. And I don't know where, but I think they probably found a small place where they could stay. And as they unpacked, I'll bet they thought, we have a little bit of food. What's going to happen? And Ruth probably said to Naomi, you know, as we were coming into town, I saw the barley fields full of barley and, be, and ready to be harvested. Do you think somebody might let me go along and pick up the stuff that falls from their arms so that we could get a little bit of food? And Ruth and Naomi said, why, yes, in fact, God made it a law in Israel that when everybody harvests their grain, now what they would do is they grab a bit and they take a sharp knife and cut the bottom, and anything that falls to the ground, they cannot pick up. They have to leave everything that falls to the ground for widows and for foreigners. And they can't clean the corner of the fields out. They have to leave the corner so that widows and foreigners can collect the grain from there. And so I'm sure that you could go into any field around here and get food for us out of those fields. And so the next morning, Ruth got her clothes on and she got ready to go out. And I think that they probably prayed. I think they probably, whoops, wrong picture. They probably prayed and asked God to help Ruth end up in a place that would be favorable to them, that would be good for them. And Ruth went, and she, the Bible says that as she went along, she happened upon the field of Boaz. Now, do you think she just happened upon the field of Boaz? Do any, does, when God is involved, and he's always involved, does anything just happen? God directed her, didn't he? Did God have to direct her? No. But in his grace, he directed her to Boaz's field. Boaz was a really rich man. He had pots of fields. He had barley fields and he had wheat fields. He was a rich man. And God directed her to that field. And she went in and the workers were kind. And she was gathering the extras, the things that fall down and after a while, she saw a very dignified man come into the field, and he was talking to the regular workers, and she could see that he was kind to his workers, and his workers respected him and, uh, and loved him, and she saw him pointing her direction and looking that way. She thought, uh-oh, is he going to make me leave? And pretty soon... The dignified man, who do you think he was? Who's the dignified man? He was the owner. Do you remember whose field she ended up in? Yeah. Boaz. So Boaz came over and started talking to her, and she might have thought, what is he going to say? And he said, I see that you're gathering grain, and I hope that you have a good day gathering grain said, oh, thank you, sir. I'm Ruth, Naomi's daughter-in-law. He says, oh, I know about you. Already? He, how do you think he knew about her? How do you think he knew about her? Oh, he lived in the same town. In the same town. That's right. And word got around, didn't it? Everybody saw them coming into town. And, and when they went home, they said, Naomi's back, and she's got Ruth with her. I wonder who Ruth is. And they started talking about Ruth and Naomi pretty soon. And one of the things that got to
to Boaz, he heard how Ruth had left her home so that she could take care of Naomi. And Boaz said to her, I heard that, and I pray that the Lord blesses you for all that you have done. In fact, I want you to always, the whole time that the harvest time is, always come to my fields. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Did Boaz have to do that to her? No, but Boaz showed her favor, right? He showed her grace. God used Boaz to show Ruth grace. So she is in the fields, and Boaz went off to working with some, checking on other things. And pretty soon, the man in charge of the field said, all right, everybody stop. It's time for lunch. It's time to eat. And so they took a break, and they all gathered somewhere. Maybe they had some shade trees or something, and they were sitting there. And Ruth, she wasn't one of the workers. She was just kind of there, and so she stopped. And pretty soon, she heard Boaz say, hey, come on over here with everybody else. And so Boaz invited Ruth under into the place where all the other workers were, and he made sure that she had plenty to eat for lunch out of the net. You think that was an accident? No, God was directing this, wasn't he? But, so Ruth accepted Boaz's kindness, and then, as it was time to uh, finish up lunch, they went back out to the fields, and Boaz called to some of his main workers. He said, you see that girl? She is a foreigner. Now, was he mean to foreigners? He wasn't because he was a godly man. He was kind to foreigners. The Bible taught him to be kind to foreigners. He, but anyway, he said, if she wanders into the place where she shouldn't go because it hasn't been harvested yet, don't stop her. Just let her get whatever she wants. And as you're going along and you're gathering some things and you see that she's behind you, just go ahead and drop some on purpose. Well, he's being extra kind to her, isn't he? And then he said to the ladies that were helping, to the maidens, he said, I want you to help her out. She doesn't know how things work around here. You guys help her, explain to her, help her fit in, and be as kind to her as you can. Wow. God provided direction and provision provision for Ruth, didn't he? She had nothing. She had very little. She had nowhere to go. But she was able to go out and God directed her right to the right place. God, um, to a place where she was accepted by everyone there. So she kept working. And now what do you think Naomi was thinking back home? Now, we have phones today. Right? If it was today, Ruth would have got on her phone and she'd have said, I happen to be in the best field in the area. But there's no phones. There was no, there was nothing. So Ruth is sitting back at her house and she probably wondered, I wonder where, I'm sorry, Naomi, right? Mom was back at the house. She's wondering, I wonder where Ruth ended up. She didn't know. She kept looking out. And then she saw Ruth coming down the road. And she went out to meet her. And she, she said, Ruth, where did you end up going? And she looked at how much she said, wow, you have a whole lot of food. You must have ended up in a field of a man who was very kind. I hope the Lord will bless him. And Ruth said to Naomi, I ended up in the field of Boaz. And he was very kind. In fact, he told me that I could keep coming to his fields all the way through barley harvest and all the way through the wheat harvest so that we can have plenty of food to take care of ourselves for the whole year. And Naomi said, you were in Boaz's field? Boaz is one of our relatives. God directed you right to one of our relatives who is so kind and such a generous man. And Naomi I'm sure she was happy. Now, Naomi had not been happy for a while, had she? Her husband died. Her sons died. 
She really didn't have anything back in Moab. When she got to Bethlehem, all she could do is remember the bad things that happened, had, had taken place in her life. But now Ruth had been given God's favor and Boaz's favor, and she was happy. She must have thought, oh, God has remembered me. God has blessed Ruth and me here in my homeland. So God provided for them. Did God have to provide for them? No. But he did. And when God provides something for someone, it's because of God's grace. Right? And God can provide for us. If we believe on Jesus, he will accept us into his family. Right? If we trust in him, that means believe him and do what he says, he will direct our ways. We can, if we acknowledge him, he will direct us in the right ways. If we live for him, he will provide for us everything that we need. Now, lots of people want stuff that they don't need. But if we live for him, the Bible says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in heaven. So everything that we need, God will provide for us if we're living for him. And all of these things come from God because of his grace. We can't work for any of that. Right? Even our salvation, especially our salvation, is by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And then not of yourselves, it is the, class, gift of God. Not of works, can't work, lest any man should boast. So let's remember some more, let's, and when this, through this week, maybe you could read the book of Ruth. Cody, you read a bunch of Bible uh, the week before. Look up the book of Ruth, there's four short chapters in there. You could remember some of the things we learned and see some of the stuff coming up for next week. And in Ruth we see how God took care of her by his grace and favor.